Well, hello everybody. Um, I've been told it's one o'clock, so we need, to, uh, we, we need to make a good start. So firstly, um, I'd just like to say welcome and thank you all for joining today. Um, it's, it's lovely to see some very familiar faces here. I mean, it's so wonderful to, uh, to be able to get together and meet in person again. Um, and it's great to see um, uh, plenty of new faces here as well. So um, thank you for taking the time. Um, I'm Julie Carroll Davis. I'm the Senior Vice President for um, Strategic Business Development for our publisher partners, um, particularly um, with a focus on, on books um, at the moment. So um, a, a tiny bit of background. Um, I came from the ProQuest business. I'm in year 25, just starting year 25. Um, with ProQuest, so you know, have 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 had a, a very long journey and many acquisitions um, with the business over over the years. And today, uh, I, I'm very pleased to be able to share with you some of our experiences um, and the opportunities that come for the next part of the the the, the journey, which is um, ProQuest as as a, as as part of Clarivate. So that's what we're going to do over the next sort of 20, um, 25 minutes. But it would be completely remiss of me um, to um, start without just taking a moment to say um, thank you to all of you and thank you um, particularly to all of our publishing partners. We know that the last few years have, have been very challenging. Um, in, in many ways, um, through the pandemic, through um, war in Europe and, and through challenged economies now. But working together um, and continuing to partner very effectively, um, we've been able to deliver for our customers um, and, for, and for our businesses as well. So we really want to say thank you for your continued partnership um, through that adversity. And uh, we've got lots of exciting um, things ahead um, to talk to you about. And, you know, for a business like Clarivate, um, we couldn't possibly do what we do um, without you. So, with that said, let, let's jump in a little bit. So, in December last, last year, um, Clar uh, Clarivate uh, acquired ProQuest. Um, and, you know, two very highly complementary trusted market leaders in their own fields in the industry. So, um, you know, it's very exciting to think about, and we're going to take a look, about, uh, a look at what Clarivate plus ProQuest um, really bring, br brings to the market. Um, since we last met and last spoke, um, for those, that you, those of you already working with, you know, we're, we're 10 months into um, that acquisition and integration right, right now, and so much has happened, an awful lot has happened so far. And part of that is absolutely down to, um, and made a lot easier, by the um, shared values and vision that both Clarivate and ProQuest have for advancing research, teaching and learning, um, and the shared respect that both businesses have for our customers, for our partners, um, and for our colleagues. Um, it, it, it certainly um, makes things much easier. Um, as, a, as an organization, as a company, we remain committed to being publisher independent and embedded in the research um, publishing community. Um, we made a great start in some other areas as well. So I want to tell you about some of the um, reorganization of our business um, in recent months. And, and I think a very good example is um, the creation of a unified um, academic and government um, market vertical business. So bringing together all of the assets of ProQuest and, and Ex Libris um, with, the, uh, with, with the web of science. Um, as well into um, a, a single business unit that is working together um, to support and meet um, the needs and, and serve our publishing partners effectively, serve our customers, um, universities, libraries, government institutions, um, etc. So that's been an exciting development over the last few months as well and allows us to move forward with a lot of the things we're going to look at and, and think about in terms of new opportunities and, uh, and product integrations. Both the Clarivate and 
ProQuest businesses have a long heritage um, of innovation and firsts and market leading um, acts. And um, if Mr. Thompson will forgive me, um, I'd like to begin with the sort of tale of the two Eugenes um, who are critical um, to both of our businesses today um, with what they started a long time ago. Eugene Power um, set up a, um, well, went to, the, went to the British Museum as it was then, ahead of the, uh, ahead of the British Library, to scan all of the um, scholarly treasures um, and, uh, and microfilm them all um, to, to, you know, to secure them um, in very uncertain times. That business um, became University Microfilms Inc. and its transition since that 1938 foundation through to ProQuest is, um, is, is where we are today. And uh, Dr. Eugene Garfield, who invented um, uh, citation and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and citation management and, uh, and, and searching, um, again, growing into um, the web of science business that we see today. If we leapfrog a little bit, um, sort of through the decades, you know, we can, we can jump to the 90s very quickly. So you see there, ProQuest um, launching its first online databases um, in, uh, in the mid-90s and the launch of the Web of Science in, in, in 1997. So, um, you know, some real heritage there. In the 2000s, um, you know, that was the year of, of software and technology and, and, and I think there, you know, a number of you may be very familiar with the um, Primo and Summon web scale discovery services. You know, they were... Um, they were pioneered in the 2000s, along with a lot of cloud, um, a lot of cloud-based um, library management system services. And then we sort of leapfrog just to position, you know, position the business in, in 2016. Um, the sale of the um, intellectual property and science business by Thomson Reuters really saw the founding of, um, of Clarivate. Um, which then became publicly listed in, in 2019. And, uh, um, you know, at the end of last year, um, ProQuest were delighted um, to join that family. So a very rich um, and long heritage of innovation. And, you know, you can see both businesses have been in the market um, for such a long time. And I think that speaks a lot as to the sort of trusted partner status that we have with both our customers um, and, uh, and our publishing partners. And um, that absolutely um, continues. So, all the leading um, universities, academic institutions, government institutions, funders, not-for-profits, corporations, um, and law firms all look to Clarivate and ProQuest um, to solve their most complex problems. And here I think you can really start to see the complementarity of the two businesses and, uh, and, you know, the, and, and, and what they offer, um, both customers and publishers, um, as, they, uh, as they come together. Um, for Clarivate, you, know, you can see um, the importance and, and the position with the, the 30 top biopharmaceutical companies, um, over 100 um, of, of the leading global law firms, um, and, and more than 50 patent offices globally um, rely on Clarivate content analytics and tools, as of course do the 7,000 corporations, libraries, academic institutions um, who, who, are, who, who are very strong um, Clarivate um, customers. And then you add to that the ProQuest piece bringing um, 26,000 academic libraries um, into, um, into the family, um, 130 um, million students accessing um, ProQuest content and services, um, leading to 3.2 billion um, searches on the ProQuest platform annually. So you, you get a sense of the scale here. And of course, the publishing partners, you know, we go back to where we started. Um, we can't be the business that we are today without um, working um, with all of you. That's over 9,000 publishing partners from scholarly journal providers through 
newspapers, video um, publishers and providers, um, uh, etc., et magazines and, and, and archives. So you can see there is a tremendous richness and, and wealth of content and tools and opportunity, and uh, hardly surprising that 98% of the world's top 400 universities um, rely um, so heavily on our products and services. So Clarivate and ProQuest together, really, you know, the combination of these unique um, capabilities offer a, a very comprehensive set of solutions that support all of the needs um, of, uh, of customer groups uh, across both uh, Clarivate and ProQuest. I think Clarivate's strength in scientific content and tools um, with, you know, in added to ProQuest content and, content and tools means that users will be able to tackle some of the, the, the greatest and most difficult challenges um, that we all face today. And I think this slide ir illustrates how we can support the research process um, through um, different personas, through from undergraduate, through faculty um, and, uh, and the research office. Um, our combined assets and capabilities um, aren't um, just in the sciences. Whilst that's the, you know, a huge strength of, um, of Clarivate, um, we also bring a tremendous amount of arts, humanities and social science content um, and you know, supporting that very multidisciplinary um, nature of research. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I think that's very, um, you know, that resonates very, very well um, with our users and creates new opportunities um, for your content as well. Um, both businesses have always had a very strong global footprint. Um, if I speak from a ProQuest perspective, I think our global, the global footprint in um, Asia, for example, is enhanced enormously. Um, in the, the coming together and, and, and the acquisition of um, Clarivate. So we have more than 11,000 um, colleagues um, in, in 40 countries. So, you know, when we talk about being a global business, when we talk about global content, and we talk about reaching global markets, um, I think this is a very good illustration. And if that's colleagues, um, again, a lot of the, the publishers that, uh, that we work with on the ProQuest side of the business, um, we are um, distributing your content um, to, uh, to, through our products um, to our customers. And so, you know, we know that a very important part, in fact, the critical part of the value proposition that the, uh, the ProQuest products and businesses um, bring to publishers is, is quite simply that reach, that reach beyond those customers that your own sales teams are reaching yourself. And you can see that here with well over 500 colleagues, um, sales colleagues um, operating um, across the globe. Um, again, particular strength, I think, relative to uh, a lot of individual pu publishers and indeed some other aggregators in that um, Asia Pacific region, a very strong presence in Europe um, as well as USA. So, it's about our partners too. I mean, that's why we're here today. That's why we're meeting with all of you. So, you know, you and Clarivate together um, really are contributing to a better world by improving research, learning, and insights. And I think that's, you know, that's why we all do what we do and, uh, and why we, 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 we get up um, every day and come to work. Um, I want to... to talk to you really and, and share with you. Some of you will be very familiar with some of these um, products and, and some won't. I mean, you know, we've talked a lot about the tremendous set of, of assets that are in the, the, the ProQuest business, the Clarivate business. And I think in that final section at the bottom there, you get a true sense of the depth and the breadth um, of, the, uh, uh, of the content and the research assets that come from this combined business. Um, you'll see on the top line there, those of you that are working with ProQuest will see that it's in that um, uh, discovery and knowledge acquisition learning process. Um, you'll see 
the, the flagship products there, eBook Central um, for eBooks. That's what we're bringing to, uh, to the organization. ProQuest One Academic, um, the aggregation platform for journals, news, magazines, um, dissertations, video, etc. Um, and those customers here um, who operate with our marketplaces um, in the books area, you know, that's where, um, uh, that's where products like Rialto sit as well. I think when you move into um, the, uh, the ideation um, uh, section, then you really start to see how the ProQuest assets and the Clarivate assets um, come together and, and, and opportunities there for streamlining um, workflows um, for academics and rese researchers um, and really enriching um, the whole user experience. And of course, that's where our Web of Science um, uh, product um, sits as well. And, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about just some of the, the, the early integrations that are going on there. On the far right-hand side, in terms of commercialization, et cetera, what I haven't mentioned and, and aren't talking about in great detail today is, of course, the um, Scholar One product, that um, scholarly journal workflow tool um, that many, many publishers um, rely on um, for their journals. But, uh, you know, that's a, it's another incredible asset when you, you know, when you start to look at the assets that are assembled here and what they can deliver for the research community, um, it's, uh, it really is um, quite amazing. I wanted to spend just uh, a few minutes um, talking about um, today's publishing environment and some of the challenges that we all face and, uh, and, and how we're thinking about some of them. And I'm sure there's nothing on this page um, that you will not recognize in, in one way or another um, in, in your own business with your, with your own customers. So certainly talking about accelerating trends, um, that shift from um, print to electronic and to mobile um, has been phenomenal. Uh, and it's been phenomenal, not surprisingly, over the last two and a half years. Um, because as the pandemic hit, as academic institutions, um, academic institutions closed and, and switched to remote teaching and learning, as corporations closed their offices and staff, you know, were working at best hybrid and, and very often remote, um, that, that's seen a massive shift from physical media to electronic media. And, you know, um, those of you that we've been working with and been talking about how the business has been evolving and market trends will have seen that in your own results as well. You know, um, uh, 20 and 21 were, were phenomenal for, for that shift. Um, but, you know, going to the left, that creates some challenges. And those are challenges that we're all seeing this year. Um, we're seeing, you know, uh, library budget uncertainty. And it's not so much about, you know, the overall picture with library budgets, but it's going to how they are being prioritized, how, you know, spending the, re you know, one of the reasons why there was such an incredible um, uplift in e-sales um, for the last couple of years was the reprioritization um, of a lot of a lot of budgets. So if I give you the example in in books at the at the lowest point, um, nine percent, we could see um, across all partners um, print purchasing dipped to nine percent of uh, of total books. Um, so you know ninety one percent e. Now of course that wasn't going to that that's not sustainable and it's you know, it shifted back slightly different in different markets, but overall it's much more in that sort of 50, 50, 45, 55 um, range. But that means that, you know, the, the, the budget that was driving that 91% um, of e-purchasing is, you know, moving back to more physical media in some cases. So lots and lots of reallocation of budget going, um, lots of catch-up purchasing, things like that um, in the library. So I think, you know, those are those are some of the challenges that that flow um, through to the library. Um, the acceleration, 
sorry, the, the acceleration of the need for and the demand for analytics to drive um, research and decision making, again, um, we saw step up and, uh, and grow enormously, enormously during the pandemic. Um, and I'm not sure that's showing very much sign um, of, of decline up at the moment. And then open research. Um, so trend there and, and not pandemic specific. I mean, obviously the growth um, of open research has been tremendous. Um, the challenges around it um, and, and, and managing it tremendous too. But you know, again, the pandemic created um, within the academic library sector anyway, a, a real um, focus and need for as broader and as much access as was absolutely possible. And open um, obviously pays. Um, a, a part in that. And then the, the growth and importance of preprints, um, absolutely vital. You know, how can we get an earlier view um, into, the, into the process and uh, et cetera? And I'm sure um, my colleague Nandita is going to talk more about those things um, when, uh, in, the next, in the next session here. Um, those accelerating trends, as we talked about, all have, you know, very much have um, challenges um, associated with them. Some of them under our control, as we've talked about, and, and of course, some of them not um, in, in the much bigger environment. So businesses like ours, working with you, um, are always looking at how we um, adapt to change. And, you know, how we, you know, and, and that change, so students may be back on campus very often, but blended learning um, is here to stay. Um, in the corporate markets, hybrid working, remote working um, is, uh, is here. And from a research process perspective, you know, how do we support that? From a customer and sales engagement perspective, how do we support that and how do we evolve our business um, to uh, adapt to those changes. And importantly, um, what's next? And uh, what, are the, what are the new models? Where and how do people want to access content? How else can we um, be supporting that research and innovation um, uh, life cycle there? So these big challenges need big solutions. Um, and you know the combination, I think, of the uh, Clarivate and ProQuest strengths start us on those paths and, and keep us on that path to, to, to those big solutions. Um, and one of those, of course, is product innovation. Now, product innovation, as we all know, doesn't happen overnight, but there's certainly some really um, good things in, in place at the moment that will, you know, that will flow through, that help um, researcher workflows, that help efficiencies um, in that workflow. So I, I think the classic example there um, is uh, for mutual customers. So if a customer um, subscribes to Web of Science and subscribes to a ProQuest aggregated database, when they find a citation in Web of Science, um, then if the full text is, is in the on the ProQuest platform, they can link through to that full text. And again, it's sort of, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's enriching and simplifying at the same time um, those workflows for those researchers. Um, I think that's a, a, really good, um, a really good example there. Um, and, you know, certainly speaks to that improving um, user experience um, as well. Um, analytics, analysis, better insights, data-driven decision-making, um, absolutely core, and I think you're going to see um, some innovations there um, as well. And of course, building more comprehensive solutions. You know, we looked earlier at the range of assets um, that, that, that are available and, and how we, um, how we big build them um, into much more comprehensive solutions. So there's a lot of evolution going on here. There's a lot of change, as there always is in our markets. But I think there's a few things where continuity is absolutely crucial. And I just want to reassure um, anybody in the audience, either customers or existing partners, you know, there is, there is continuing support for existing products. The products that we have in the market are in the market, are staying in the market at the moment. So lots of continuity um, there. Lots of um, increased um, collaboration with customers. You can't deliver the sort of product innovation and solutions that we're looking to deliver without that very deep 
um, collaboration and engagement with customers. Um, after the book fair, I'll be heading, we have a, a customer advisory board um, in the UK and we have one in Australia and New Zealand coming up um, all in the next couple of weeks. That, that engagement with customers um, is, is fundamental. And of course, the respect for the value that all of you as publishers and your content bring to that research e ecosystem. And how do, we, how do we make your content more discoverable? How do we showcase that content? How can we enrich it um, for the benefit of, of, of customers and partners? So, you know, sort of ending up really with the theme that we started with, um, your success is our success, and those two things are indelibly linked. Um, I can't end without a little plug and to say we're up on, I think it's J47 in um, Hall 4.2. And come and stop by and talk to some of our colleagues um, about the Rialto Marketplace, the selection and acquisition tool um, for integrated with the library management system. Um, if you have an ebook platform, and you're not integrated with Rialto, um, we'd love to have a, a conversation with you to see whether or not um, it's beneficial to your businesses as well. Um, if you're a provider, a publisher of scholarly journals, um, uh, newspapers, video resources, um, magazines, and you're not part of um, ProQuest One Academic, again, we'd, we'd love to talk to you more about that. So um, stop by the booth or, or grab one of my colleagues. And, uh, and if you want to know more about um, our workflow management um, tool and, and, and service for scholarly journals, Scholar One, um, then again, please do stop by and, and speak, and ask what, uh, speak to one of our colleagues and, uh, and ask how we can partner on that. So I'm going to end there. I'm going to say thank you very much indeed um, for joining us today. Um, I'm very conscious it's during your lunch hour um, if, you, uh, if you haven't um, eaten already, and, uh, and I really do appreciate your time. Thank you very much. <laughs>